Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, wanted to do a quick video. Haven't done a video talking about the Godhead in a while. And the reason I'm wearing my cap is because you ever had those times in spring where you think, hey, spring's right upon us and you put away all the heaters. <laughs> and then you wake up in the morning and you're like, well, these spring mornings are still very cold. So that's why I'm still wearing my cap. But um, if you want to turn to 1 Timothy 3.16. The name of this is baptized in the names, plural, of the Trinity, question mark, okay? Some preachers will talk about this, some won't, but I thought God put it on my heart to do this real quick study with you, brothers and sisters in Christ, okay? So 1 Timothy 3.16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up, and to glory. Okay, I've got some videos. Uh, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries got some videos. Brother JT's got some videos. And some of the other brethren out there have some videos on the Godhead of the King James Bible. So make sure you have a King James Bible and you have it open and you're following along. Okay? So this thing is, we're going to get in here. God showed me a few things. We're going to be mainly talking about the Godhead over the Trinity but we're also going to talk about baptism a little bit because it's just it's within the scriptures we're going through. We might as well talk about it. So, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. I don't know how, how do I say it? I don't know, I know what the Godhead is, but I can't explain how exactly everything works. It's a mystery. Okay? I can only tell you what it is and what the Bible says it is. Okay? So, Go back and watch some of our videos. The Godhead is simple. The Bible teaches that Godhead is God in one person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Godhead is three in one. Body, soul, spirit. Body, Jesus Christ. Soul, God the Father. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's why it's Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the body. The soul is God the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and the, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Okay, we're made in the likeness of God. Body, soul, see, body, soul, and spirit. That's the Godhead, okay? Now, in my studies, just a quick overview, in my studies, when I've studied the Bible, bottom line, a soul can be in two places at once. Okay, it's just a brief overview, and then we're going to get into baptism. Uh, um... A, was a, a soul can be in two places at once. The Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My soul is in my body, and it's seated in heaven with Christ Jesus right now as a saved sinner. A soul, I'm just saying, the Bible shows that a soul can be in two places at once. God the Father is in heaven, the soul, seated on the throne. He's running everything. And yet, his soul, God the Father, the soul, is also in Christ Jesus. Jesus says, believe the, not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. A soul can be in two places at once. This isn't me explaining how it works. I'm just stating what the Bible shows. God the Father is in heaven at all times, seated on the throne, the soul. But he's also in Jesus. Our soul is in our bodies, but it's also in heaven. Now the body, my body can only be in one place at once. Jesus Christ, you go through the whole Old Testament, the angel of the Lord here, the angel of the Lord there. He's there in the Old Testament in a physical form, in an incorruptible body in the Old Testament. And remember we did the teaching, brothers and sisters in Christ, you can go look at that teaching, where what people don't understand about Jesus Christ when he comes as a virgin Mary, when he's born of a virgin Mary, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He went from an incorruptible body to a corruptible body. The only thing is, is he never saw corruption. He was perfect, because he's God fully and completely. But a body can be in one place at any given time. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, it's omnipresent. It's everywhere. We've done studies on why, like heaven, when I talked about the glory of the Lord, revealing itself in three ways, manifesting itself physically in three ways. Cloud, fire, and light. And it's like I said, that's a whole other study that we did together, if you've been following this ministry. Right? And, and hell, they're burning for all eternity. The Holy Spirit's omnipresence everywhere. They're burning for all eternity. 
Okay? You got clouds, but the Holy Spirit's everywhere. It's in me. I'm saved. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're saved, he's also in you. He's in every everybody that's saved. You go to the Old Testament, there was people that had the Holy Ghost. There's people, King Saul, who lost the Holy Ghost. It left them. Okay? But the Holy Ghost is omnipresent. It's everywhere. It's not me explaining how it works. It's just what the Bible teaches. And then... One of the big things is it's not modalism. Can they split off? I honestly believe that the only time the Godhead split off is on the cross. And we did a teaching on that. Okay? I used the marker board and showed the connection between body, soul, and spirit. How we are connected. Our, our body and soul is connected. That way when our body sins, it taints our soul. And then when we get saved, that spiritual circumcision... That cuts that line, because I erased that line from body and soul. Our soul is now connected to Jesus Christ. What our body does doesn't affect our soul anymore. The sin that our body does. Okay? As far as sending us to hell. Okay? That I did that whole drawing and everything. Okay? I believe that's the only time they separated. Was at the cross. Okay? But that said, I just want to do a brief overview. The Godhead is simple. It's body, soul, and spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Son of God the Father, is the body, and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit. Okay? And these three are one. When you look at Jesus Christ, He is the person of the Godhead. He's the image of the invisible God. The body you can see. You can't see the soul, you can't see a spirit. Okay? Jesus said Himself, the Spirit hath not flesh and bones, as I have, because they thought they were seeing a ghost when Jesus appeared to the apostles. Okay, they thought they were seeing a ghost. Okay, a spirit hath not flesh and bones. You can see the body. That's the Godhead. But we're going to start at Matthew 3.11. Make sure you turn to Matthew 3.11 in your King James Bibles. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John the Baptist. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Two separate baptisms. Don't be confused, brothers and sisters of Christ. A lot of the charismatic people will try to put this together as one. It's just one baptism. It's Holy Ghost. It's with the Holy Ghost, and you get baptism with fire. How do we know this is two baptisms? Well, you simply keep reading, and you get the context. Verse 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. That's purging everybody. How? And gather his wheat into the garner. Holy Ghost baptism. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The baptism with fire. Remember, hell is fire. Fire is fire. Okay? Baptism with the Holy Ghost, you go to heaven. Baptism with fire, you're going to hell. Fire is fire. Okay? Verse 13. Then cometh Jesus to Galilee, to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. Okay? If you remember the study we did together again uh, about um, he saw, not Esau, I just liked it because it kind of rhymed a little bit. But the whole point is, is only John the Baptist saw the dove, uh, the cloud. I believe it's the glory of the Lord surrounding the Holy Spirit. You can't see the Holy Spirit. Jesus said himself, the Spirit hath not flesh and bones. But there was a cloud around the Holy Spirit that came down like as a dove. But only John the Baptist saw it, and it was a sign for him to show that Jesus, this is the Christ. And if you keep reading later on, he ends up doubting, even though he saw that sign. Remember, the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom. Even after he saw that sign, he started doubting and sent some of his people while he was in prison, saying, Hey, are you the one, or should we wait for another? Right? That was the whole point of that. That's a whole other study, but I like to point that study out. Okay, God showed me, a brother showed me. God showed me through a brother in Christ, hey, it says he saw, one person, not they saw, not the group saw, so I want to throw that out there. John 4, 1 says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. Remember what Jesus is going to do, he's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire, not with water. Okay, that's what John the Baptist was baptizing with, with water. He was going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus is the judge, 
Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, but then, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Everyone has to answer Jesus Christ, both saved and lost. That's the whole point I'm trying to make there. Okay? What baptism is most important? Baptizing with, the wa with water or being baptized by the Holy Spirit? We're going to look into this. Okay, Matthew 28, 16. Turn to Matthew 28, 16. Here's the famous passage that a lot of people will read and say, It's the Trinity, it's the Trinity. Let's keep reading. Verse 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. This is after the resurrection. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the names of well, if you're actually following along in your King James Bible, you realize I added an S to it. That's what the Trinitarians do. Right? They don't actually say S, but they do with their belief. It says name singular. Baptize them in the name singular of what? Of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. What's the name of the body, soul, and spirit? The person of the Godhead. We'll get there. So baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is before Pentecost. This is before the people that Jesus is talking to and teaching before he gets caught up in the cloud. The glory of the Lord takes him up. Okay. Before that happens, this is before they have the Holy Spirit in them. Okay. Now, one thing I like to point out is the, a lot of these false people that are really Trinitarians, hardcore Trinitarians, they'll still use the word name, but they ignore the name part where it says name singular. We're baptizing in the name singular of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They, they really like to ignore that name part, and all they focus on is the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. It's the Trinity. It's the Trinity. Really. Okay. We're going to see about that as we keep going. Okay, turn to Acts 4.12. Now remember, it said name singular. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There we see that name again, singular. Not names, plural. Name, singular. Turn to Philippians 2.9. Therefore God also hath exalt, highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name, singular, of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Remember, everybody's going to have to answer to him. He's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Everybody has to go through Jesus Christ, saved and lost. Okay. The lost, if they don't go through Jesus Christ today, while they're alive and get saved and be baptized by the Holy Spirit, they're going to be baptized with fire. Hell and the lake of fire. It's under the earth. Verse 11, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Said it again, I'll say it a million times. God the Father is biblical. We just read it right there. Of God the Father. 1 Corinthians 8 6 says, But there is but one capital G God, the Father. Talks about how who are by all things and who are all things. He created all things basically. Then it goes, and there's one capital L Lord, Jesus Christ, who created all things. How'd they both create all things if they're two separate persons? It's not possible. Okay. We see there God the Father again. It says, At the name of Jesus, every tongue it will confess. I remember there's a song that Seminole String Band did. I still love this song to this day, but it's like, At the name of Jesus, every, name, every tongue it will confess. At the name of Jesus, every knee it shall bow. Every one of us, let's see, every knee it shall bow. 
Every one of us, every one of them that mocked and every one that turned away shall stand before him on judgment day. Absolutely. But the thing we got to remember is everybody's going to answer to him. Judgment seat of Christ, great white throne. Everybody's going to answer to Jesus Christ. But what is that name? Jesus. There's a big push today, brothers and sisters in Christ, to get away from the name Jesus. You still have people that say, Yeshua, Yeshua. Well, first of all, the New Testament, where we get the name Jesus, was written in Greek, not Hebrew. So they had to translate Greek to Hebrew. And how in the translation did Jesus get lost? Because Yeshua doesn't mean, it's not Hebrew for Jesus. Yeshua just means God. It's another way of just saying God. Okay? It's supposed to be a name. There's a name that God gave him that's above all names. That the name of Jesus. If you replace Jesus with Yeshua, you're saying at the name of God. But it still doesn't give us the name. They're doing everything they can to get rid of the name Jesus. Don't fall for that. Do not, do not fall for that. Okay? But what's the name? Jesus. Now, these apostles... We saw what the command was given to him by, by Jesus before he was caught up. He said, you're supposed to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They, they, and like I said, the Trinitarians and a lot of these people, you have to be baptized to be saved. You have to be baptized to be saved. We're going to be talking about that. All right? But let's see, you've got the apostles. The orders were very clear and the name, singular, of the God, of God the, the Father the Son, the Holy Ghost. And we realize there's only one God, capital G God, it's the Father. The Son, there's only one Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God. I'll never deny that. He's the Son of God. And the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit. You still have people that attack you. Can you believe that? You still have people who claim to be Bible-believing Christians will attack you for saying Holy Ghost and say, no, it's Holy Spirit. Just people want to argue over anything because they just don't want to abide by the Scripture. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Spirit and ghost are the same thing. The Old Testament, they'd say they'd yield up the ghost. What are they saying? The Spirit is leaving them that gives them life because they're old and they're dying. They yielded up the ghost. We read right there, Holy Ghost. And the Bible perversions like to take out Holy Ghost. The word ghost. They're trying to replace the word ghost with spirit to say that the King James Bible has errors because it says ghost instead of spirit. Ghost and spirit are the same thing. Just because a lost world perverts the word ghost, okay, be careful. Don't doubt the book because the lost world is trying to pervert everything. Remember our teachings, brothers and sisters in Christ, according to the Word of God. The ways of the world are always contrary to Scripture. They're always going to go against this book. And they're always going to try to make this book look wrong, look funny, and everything it can to get people away from absolute truth. Don't fall for that. So let's get into this baptism. Remember, the apostles were told to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Now let's go see. Did when they baptized people, did they say, We are going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, or the Holy Ghost? Did they say this? Let's find out. Turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Remember, once again, the glory of the Lord presents itself in three different ways. Do we remember the three different ways? Cloud, fire, light. What do we see here? The cloven tongues like of fire. It's the glory of the Lord that's coming down with the Holy Spirit. And it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. No, the fire was the Holy Ghost. No, that was the glory of the Lord. Because though it says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Why do I say this? Where's baptism? Where's the ba being, being baptized? They receive the Holy Ghost without being baptized? Oh yeah. What baptism is the most important? Being baptized with water or being baptized with the Holy Ghost? They're not 
the same thing. Being baptized with water is an outward showing. I have nothing against that. You want to be baptized with water to show the saved and lost world, I believe in Jesus Christ, go for it. But if you're saying, I'm going to do the water baptism, but I'm going to reject Holy Ghost baptism, Jesus' baptism, you're still going to wind up in hell. There's only two baptisms, the Holy Ghost and fire. Water's not in there at all. If all you've done is gone to these church buildings, these battle buildings, to be part of a club, oh, they said I had to be baptized to be saved. And you got baptized, you're still lost and on your way to hell. If you didn't go through Jesus Christ and get His baptism. This is His baptism. How do you know? They received the Holy Ghost. Turn to Acts 2.36. Like I said, through this study, as I was going through, I went ahead and threw in some extra verses because I wanted to point out that there's people getting the Holy Ghost without being water baptized. There's people that are being water baptized that aren't getting the Holy Ghost. What's important? True biblical salvation. Repentance towards God. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and you ask God to save you. There's some of us that would be begging God to save us because of how bad and filthy and wicked and wretched we were. You say, are you that now? I'm not as bad as I was. God saved me and cleaned up my life. Do I still struggle with sin today? Absolutely. I had someone tell me, <laughs> I had someone accuse me, you're just trying to be holy, you're just so holier than thou. First time someone tried to accuse me of that, and I'm like, well, let's see, you're lost, I'm saved. I'm supposed to be holier than you. God has saved me, he's come into my life, I have the Holy Spirit, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, God came into my life and He cleaned up my life. I still struggle with things. I still have addictions I struggle with. I told the brethren that. I struggle with video games, movies, TV show. I was highly addicted to porn. Okay? It's, it's a struggle in your head to the day you die. Okay? Especially with all the modest women out there in this world. How porn is everywhere. Movies, TV shows, video games, advertisement. Okay, government. Oh yeah, it's everywhere. Okay, you ever heard the? I hate to say it like this, but you ever heard how the saying "sex sells"? They use it in everything. And modest dressed women pr to provoke you to buy their product. It's everywhere. I still struggle with sin to this very day. But when it comes to the lost world, I am holier than the lost world. I'm supposed to. The Bible says, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." As it is written in the Old Testament, be ye holy, for I am holy. Okay? We are supposed to be holier. But I was called that. I'm baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's the important baptism. Baptizing with water, it's not that important. If you want to, fine. Outward showing, fine. Right now, I'm all by myself. If I had one brother in Christ come out here going, you want to get baptized? I'd baptize you. I'd say no. Why? Because the whole point of water baptism is supposed to be an outward showing to the body of Christ and to the lost world. You're declaring to the lost world, I belong to Jesus Christ. He owns me. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. He's my commander. He's my chief. He tells me what to do, and I follow and obey. That's the whole point of the water baptism. It's just an outward showing. It's not required for salvation. And when you get people that start making it required for salvation, they tend to keep you, when you make water baptism a requirement for salvation, they keep you from the true baptism that you need to be baptized with. And that's Jesus Christ. Turn to Acts 2, chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? He's asking them, what shall we do then? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You better be watching, you better be following along in your Bibles, brothers and sisters of Christ. It doesn't say that. They were commanded to go out and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But what do they do? 
and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Who's the person of the Godhead? Singular, Jesus Christ. What is the name of the Godhead? Jesus Christ. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and the breaking of bread and prayer. And fear came upon every soul. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. Remember, 1 Corinthians 1.22, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But Colossians 2.9 says what? For in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's why there's a name singular of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're not baptized in three persons. They're not baptized into three separate names. The word, like I said, they like to add S with their actions and their belief in Trinity. Baptize in the names. They don't actually add an S when they say it, but they do with their beliefs and actions. No, it's name singular. Okay. See, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's not baptized in three names. It's not baptized in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say that. It says the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and there's one name. And what does Peter go on and baptize in? Jesus Christ. The one name. The one person of the Godhead. Turn to Acts 8.5. We'll keep going. We'll look at some other incidences where there's baptism. Like I said, there's sometimes they receive the Holy Ghost when they're baptized as a sign. That's why I pointed that out there. Wonders and signs. They'd receive the Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and they'd start speaking in known languages as a sign for the Jewish people. Remember, Acts is a transition book. Okay, I'll go over it just real quickly. Jesus goes up to heaven, and what's going on is they're thinking Jesus is going to be coming back any day now for the Millennial Kingdom. So they're going out to the Jewish people and preaching to the Jewish people, and that's why there's signs and wonders. That's why people are selling a lot of their property and selling everything they own to spread it out amongst the poor, because they're looking for Jesus to come back for the Millennial Kingdom. you got to remember, it's a transition book. When the Jews had another chance to accept Jesus Christ as their King and their Messiah, after His death, burial, and resurrection, they rejected Him. So the Kingdom got put off, and it's just the church age, what we call the church age, which started at the death of Jesus Christ, but it's just the church age. The kingdom got put off, and that's why there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, a seven-year period where God goes back to the Jewish people to deal with the Jewish people before Jesus comes back and rules and reigns for a thousand years. That's why we call it millennial kingdom, because it's a thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. And it's a transition book. I had to throw in there, there's signs and wonders going on. When they get to the point where the Jews just flat out reject Jesus Christ and they, and they don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ as a whole, there's Jews getting saved. What happened to those signs and wonders? They disappear. Paul's, uh, Paul's healing people at that time because they're trying to bring in the Millennial Kingdom. The Jews reject him completely. What happens later? He can't heal people. He can't even heal himself. What happened to the signs and wonders? God said, okay, I'm done with Israel. I'm going to go to the world as a whole. To the Gentiles. There's Jews that can still get saved today, but predominantly Gentiles. Okay. That's what's going on here. But as you saw there, just read it one again, name singular, and he said Jesus Christ. He didn't say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said Jesus Christ. Turn to Acts 5, 8, 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto these those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. I highlighted that because once again, just to reiterate, signs and wonders. They're trying to go to the Jewish people still. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many take 
taken with the palsies that were lame were healed. Signs and wonders. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. There's only one great one, Jesus Christ. God Almighty. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries, signs and wonders. But when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, not names, plural, but names, singular, Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Okay? Well, that doesn't mean they were baptized in just the name of Jesus Christ. He just said that in the name of Jesus Christ, they believed him, the, believed him when it came to Jesus Christ. Well, let's keep reading. All right? Let's not jump ahead a little bit. Then Simon himself believed also. This is a whole other study. He believed also. But he, if you keep studying this, he's a lost man. He was never saved. Why? Because he never had the Holy Ghost. He was never baptized with the Holy Ghost. Simon believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. He believed, and he was baptized. But he's not saved. How do we know this? Let's keep going. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard the, that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. None of them were saved. They believed but they weren't saved. How do we know this? They didn't have the Holy Ghost in them. They believed, they were water baptized, but they were not baptized by Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit baptism. Might receive the Holy Ghost. Here's verse 16. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. They were baptized in the name, singular, Jesus Christ. Verse 17. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. They say, well, see, Simon still received the Holy Ghost. I don't believe he did. It says them, the group of people. But Simon, shortly after, what does he do? You keep reading it. Well, I'll pay for those gifts you have, because I want to go back to bewitching the people and being that great one. It's not Jesus being great in his life. He wants to be that great one. Okay? He believed he was water baptized, but I don't believe he was saved. A lot of people preach that. But we definitely know he wasn't saved until, it, until the apostles came and laid their hands on him that they were baptized with Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, okay? and received the Holy Ghost. But we see there again, the name is Jesus, singular. One person, Jesus Christ. Not God in three persons. Okay? Turn to Acts 10.44. While you're turning to Acts 10, 44, I want to throw this out there again. I've said it a lot of times, but I like to keep saying it to keep it fresh in my heart and your heart, brothers and sisters Christ. Person, when you look up the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, and I mean this when I say this, it's a great tool to have. There's times I've done teachings where I don't follow it. Because the Bible definition, the Bible gives a definition of a word. Sometimes the Webster's 1828 Dictionary doesn't line up with the Bible. Okay, But this definition does. When you look up the definition person. It's always referred to somebody who has a body and a soul, and it's always referred to somebody who is living spirit. When you say person throughout the whole Bible, it's referring to somebody that has a body, soul, and spirit. Period. That's the Bible definition. Now, remember we said part of this ministry is that words have meaning. And what does the lost world like to do? They like to pervert the definition of words to make this out to be a lie or to twist this to go into twist God's word. It still turns it into a, trying to turn God's word into a lie to, get, to go to a direction that's not going. And their biggest thing is, oh, person doesn't mean that person. Yes, it does according to scripture. And they can't handle scripture. 
When you say God in three persons, you're saying that God the Father has a body, soul, spirit. God, God the Son, that's not biblical, has, the, has a body, soul, and spirit. I notice I didn't say the Son of God. I said God the Son. It's not scriptural. Has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. And the Holy Ghost has a body, soul, and spirit of their own. When you say God in three persons, one of the biggest things about this ministry is words have meaning. Be careful with your words and make sure when you say something, you're using it in the right context based off the right definition. I slip up a lot and I used to say things and I had God had to work on me. I call it deprogramming. He had to deprogram me when I got saved and restart building me up from the bottom up. Okay, these words you used to say, they don't mean what you think they mean. This way of thinking, this way of doing things, you were lied to by the Babel building system. All that stuff that they taught you, most of it was false. Most of it goes against scripture. Traditions of men. Okay? Using that word, God in three persons. Oh, it just means, you know, body, soul, spirit. No, it doesn't. I mean, body, soul, spirit, for as far as the God in three persons, just means God the Father is the body, or soul. Jesus is the body and the Holy Spirit. No, it doesn't. When you say three persons, you're saying body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit. And God had to correct me on that. I did a word study on person. Yep, every time it's used, it's referring to somebody who has a body, soul, and living. Or it's a reference to somebody who might be dead now, but it's refer referencing them when they were alive. So you can still use person because you're referencing them when they were alive. Not present tense, but past tense. Okay, I just wanted to throw that out there, brothers and sisters Christ again. Words have meaning. God in one person. Jesus Christ has a body, the Son of God. Jesus Christ has a soul, God the Father. Okay. And we said it again. I, Jesus says, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. Right? And he's got a spirit, the Holy Spirit. That's why we can say Jesus Christ is a person, singular. Those who believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, those who continue to attack it, they're Satan worshipers. I'm sorry, at this point, with all the studies that have been put out with the Godhead versus the Trinity, if you still vehemently defend the Trinity, you worship Satan. That's whose side you're on. If you're still not, if this is a new thing to you and you don't really know, watch those studies that Brother Brian put out on the Trinity versus Godhead. I have a few studies on it. And Brother JT has a few studies on it. He wrote a book about it. Okay? The Glory of the Lord. And he used nothing but scripture after scripture after scripture. Okay? There's enough teachings. If you're looking for the truth, God will bring you to the truth. If you just want to parrot what somebody, in this high, a hireling in a Babel building says, are these false converts on YouTube that like to stand behind a camera and vehemently defend the Catholic Church, I mean, the Trinity, then you can be a parrot and find out what happens to you, okay? If you're baptized with the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ, He'll bring you into all truth. Acts, I went off a little bit, Acts 10.44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? When they say gift of the Holy Ghost, remember, they're still going to the Jews. So when people were receiving the Holy Ghost, there were signs and wonders. They could speak in other people's languages. Mm -hmm. Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Not some weird language. This is known languages. Then answered Peter, can any forbid water that, there, that these should not be baptized? Wait, 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 no, no. You've got to be baptized in order to receive the Holy Spirit with water. Not according to Scripture. These people received the Holy Spirit without being baptized with water. Why? Because the only baptism that matters is baptism with the Holy Ghost. You come into God broken in a repentant state. I had someone tell me recently, their true self just keeps coming out more and more. I had someone recently tell me they slipped up and said repentance was just going from unbelief to belief. And I was like, your true colors are showing. They're part of the easy believes in crowd. They claim to be Bible-believing Christians. Oh, I believe as you do. I believe as Brother Brian does, Brother JT. Uh, Campbell KJV and Alexander Hartley and all the, these brethren out there that are making videos, I believe as you believe. But then they slowly slip up. And this person said that she believes that repentance is just going from unbelief to belief. Okay? It's not. 
True biblical repentance is defined in Scripture as godly sorrow. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. That's how repentance works. If there's no godly sorrow, it does not work. It's reprobate. It's worthless. It's like a, a remote control, like Brother Brian likes to use, like a remote control for the TV that has no battery in it. It doesn't work. You have to have godly sorrow. But sorrow for what? You keep reading. For the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. The, the wages of sin is death. The cost of sin is hell. You've sinned against an almighty, righteous God that's going to judge you one day. Everybody getting judged by Jesus Christ, saved and lost. But if you're lost and in your sins, you've got to have sorrow for those sins. It's that simple. And people like to twist it up. What's the most important baptism? Getting saved through the plan of salvation that's found in the King James Bible. True biblical repentance. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I believe what you did on the cross, that you died to pay for my sins. Lord, I'm so sorry for, put, for my sins putting you up there, Lord. And I believe you rose the third day because you are God fully and completely, proving that you're God. Lord, I believe these things. Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, please save me. Please save me. I don't deserve it, Lord. But could you have grace and mercy on me, a sinner, and please save me? You come to God humble and broken. But what's the most important baptism? Holy Ghost baptism, not water. But we see here that he says, Can you forbid that these men be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized. I'm continuing verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now you see these people go, aha, aha. It wasn't the name of Jesus. It says the name of the Lord. And you're just, anybody who knows scripture just start shaking their head going, really? It's capital L, lowercase o-r-d. Turn to 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Who is this capital L, lowercase o-r-d? 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one capital G God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one capital L, lowercase o, R, D, Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. We're baptizing him in the name of the Lord. Who's he saying they're baptizing in the name of what? Jesus. You can't get away from it. You can't get away from Scripture. They try. They try to pervert Scripture. You can't get away from it. They're not being baptized in the Trinity and the names, plural, of God. They're being baptized by the name of the person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. Who's the, the capital L Lord? Jesus Christ. Turn to Acts 19.1. But we see two things there. Once again, they're still baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And they got the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. We've, we've read an instance where they were baptized first, and never received the Holy Ghost. They believed. So that just destroys this easy believism. Only believe, only believe. It's faith alone, faith alone. It's grace alone, not faith alone. Okay? Grace alone. And how do you find God's grace? God's grace is there in any dispensation in the Old Testament, all the way through now, all the way throughout eternity. God's grace is being dispensed all the time. It's how do you find God's grace. And today, it's through faith. You're not saved by your faith. It's not faith alone. This man believed here. Then never made it down here. His belief was in vain. Simon's a great example of that. But you see here, they, uh, they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and they received the Holy Ghost before they were water baptized. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost first, then water baptism. Then you see up there, they did water baptism, didn't get any Holy Ghost. Palaces had to come up in Acts 8, 5. Acts 19, 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? These were the disciples of John. Okay. And, they, and they said unto them, We have no... Not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. 
And he said unto them, Unto what were you, then were ye baptized? Question mark. They said unto John's baptism. What was John's baptism? He was baptizing with water for the remission of sins, to believe that their king is coming, but still baptism with water. Then said Paul, John verily, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name, singular, of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied, and all the men were about twelve. Then we see the signs of wonder still, because they're still going to the Jewish people. But you see, they're baptized in the name of Jesus. Then after that, Paul lays his hand on them, and they receive the Holy Ghost. How do we know this? Remember, he said, oh no, no, they were, when God, Paul was laying his hands on them, he, bapt, he was baptizing him as he laid his hands on him. We're going to see about this a little further down where Paul goes, I hardly baptized anybody because that's not my, as far as water baptism, it's not my calling. My calling is to make sure people get baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay, Paul wasn't out there baptizing people left and right. Water baptism. He was making sure they received the Holy Ghost. That they got truly saved and born again. Turn to Acts 22, 11. But we see their name singular. Jesus Christ. Godhead is so simple. Why people don't want to believe in it? It comes back down to sin. They love their sin. They love the ways of this wicked world. And they like to play Christian. They like to play Christian. They like going the way of the world. They want to be part of this club over here. They believe in the Trinity, so I'll believe in the Trinity. They vehemently defend the Trinity, so I'll vehemently defend the Trinity. And they just parrot what other people say. They don't actually look for truth themselves. Okay. Acts 22, 11. And when I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came to Damascus. This is Paul. After he sees Jesus on the road to Damascus, he's blinded. Verse 12, And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our Father has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one. Remember what Simon was trying to be? He was trying to be this, that he's some great one. There's only one just one. There's only one great one. Jesus Christ, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. That's why Paul is considered an apostle. He saw Jesus, he heard Jesus after the resurrection. Verse 15, For those shall be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And, thou, and I always want to throw this out. They say, well, there's a lot of other people that saw him when he was resurrected. Jesus was the one who picked out the twelve. Judas Iscariot betrayed him. Jesus is the one that picked out Paul. He's the twelfth apostle. Not the ones that the, the, the apostles said, Hey, we're going to pick these two people. And, Lord, you have to choose between the two people we chose. What does that sound like? Here in America, it's, and it's probably other countries too, what we see. They tell you, here's these two leaders. You have to choose between these two. That's not freedom. That's not true election. Okay, that's a lie and deception. We put two people up that we want in, and you have to pick between either one, and we still win, regardless which one gets in. It's deception, it's evil, it's wicked. But in that situation, God's the one who decides who's an apostle and who isn't. Not men. God chose Paul. Okay, he saw that just one, and he heard him. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Verse 16, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Paul was baptized, but he was called a brother before. Now, some people say that means he's just saying brother because they're Jewish and everything. Okay? But you see there, he was baptized, calls in, called, uh, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, what baptism was he baptized with? Well, the Holy Ghost, and he was baptized with water. Outward sign, and outward showing for the Jewish people. But what name was he baptized in? People say, well, it doesn't say, so maybe Paul was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost without actually using the name. So that's the whole point, brothers and sisters of Christ. They get away from the name of Jesus when you see people baptizing him 
with water in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. What are they doing? They're getting away from the name. They don't want to mention the name. What name was Paul uh, baptized in? Turn to 1 Corinthians 1.11. For it hath been declared unto me of you. 1 Corinthians 1.11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chol, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. Verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? This is Paul rebuking him. There's only one name that you're supposed to be baptized in. And it's not the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. That name is Jesus Christ. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. It's that simple. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Let's keep going. Verse 14. And I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in mine own name. And I baptize also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Now I believe what he's talking about here is, I didn't, God didn't send me to baptize you with water. He came to, send, to preach the gospel. You're supposed to be getting baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's what's important. But these people are falling in the trap of, let's get rid of the name of Jesus, and I'm going to be a father of men, and that man is not Jesus Christ. And I see that time and time again. Mm -hmm. 18. What's the big deal? Well, everybody's trying to get away from this. Get to verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. True salvation that leads to the baptizing with the Holy Ghost to them that perish is foolishness. How many people on YouTube are attacking Bible, it's Bible believing, God fearing men and women who have testimonies after testimonies on how God saved us and changed our life? And we repented, we believed, we confessed both in prayer, we asked God to save us. God comes in, Lord, you're my commander. When you say Jesus is your Lord, capital Lord, that means he's your commander-in-chief. When, he when you say he's your K, capital K, king, he's your commander-in-chief. He commands, you obey. How many people, that just irritates me, so many people say, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my Lord, and they don't listen to any of his commands, and they just live the way they want to live, and they're going the way of the world. They don't worship the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Okay, It's foolishness to them. When we preach the true plan of salvation, it's foolishness to them because they're going to perish. If they don't, unless, unless she all repent, you shall all likewise perish. It's that simple. Preaching the cross is foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. Being baptized with the Holy Spirit through faith Finding God's grace, faith and repentance, faith in the finished work, believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That belief isn't in vain, it's not up in your head, it's down in your heart. I've always preached this and I always will preach this. You skip repentance, that belief will never, I repeat, never make it to your heart. It'll never make it to your heart. It'll be head belief just like Simon had. It'll be the same belief that Paul was warning the Corinthians and uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Sometimes I get mixed up with first or second, but 15, verse, chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, where it talks about unless you believed in vain. And I did a, the Lord did a great study through me. I almost took credit for it. Forgive me, Lord. The Lord did a great study through me talking about the reason it's believed in vain is there's no changed life. There's no resurrection of the Christian. When you don't live a changed life after salvation, your life is denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, your belief is in vain. You skip repentance, there's never going to be a changed life after, after you claim to get saved. Claim to get saved. There's no changed life. You just go about justifying sin and living the way you want to live. And when you live like the world, look like the world, act like the world, and the world today, there's a lot of religious people that's worldly religious. It's not based off scripture. 
you still look like the world. You can try to play religion all you want. You still look like the world, act like the world, and talk like the world. Okay? What are you doing? You're denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you don't come up as a new creature in Christ Jesus after salvation, A, you're not saved, but B, you're living a life that's denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's that simple. Okay? But to us, it's to say that are saved is the power of God. As I said, there's so many testimonies of Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women that have been saved. They've repented. They've believed. They've confessed both in prayer and asked God to save them. And when God came in, you can, they have great testimonies on how God changed my life. And we that are truly saved and born again can understand why these people don't want to change life. Until God shows us in Scripture, sin for a season. They still want the world. They want a free pass to sin, you know, like that free, get out of jail free card. So they can continue sinning and sinning and sinning and doing whatever they want. They don't truly want to be saved from this world. They love this world. Okay? They don't want to be saved. They just want to be, they just don't want the consequences of their sin. They're not sorry for their sin. They just, sorry for the consequences. They don't want the consequences. It's one of those things where you look at it and say, if there's no consequences, but what you're doing is wrong, are you still going to be sorry for it? Most of them, the answer is no. If there's no consequences, they wouldn't be sorry at all. They'd do it. There's a lot of sin out there. The wages of sin is death. There's a lot of sin out there that they love, but if there was no, absolutely no consequences, they wouldn't even admit that it's wrong and just keep doing it, even though the Bible says it's sin. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, Where's the wise? Where's the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? Hath, God, hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? With all this trinity and false gospels and works to be saved. They turn faith into works. They, turn, they actually do physical works like water baptism. You need water baptism to be saved. No, you don't. You need the Holy Ghost. You be baptized by Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost. Not by me, not by any of the brethren. You need to be baptized by Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost. That's what you need. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Jesus is the person of the Godhead. Oh no, he's not. There's persons, plural, and Jesus is not the Father. They know not God. They claim to be Christians. They claim to know God. But in works they deny him. Remember that verse? Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. It's worthless. They can stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne and tell him all the good works they did for him. Depart from me, ye accursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I never knew you. It's worthless. They knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching, foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. They call it foolishness. God's like, I'm going to continue preaching the plan of salvation. Paul's like, I'm going to keep preaching God's plan of salvation, no matter how foolish it is to this world. Verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Water baptism is not that important. It's an outward showing. If you want to do it, fine. If you don't, okay. The important part is that you get baptized with the Holy Ghost by Jesus Christ. You come to Him broken. True biblical repentance, godly sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against Him. How many of us, brothers and sisters in Christ, have testimonies? Oh, I came to the Lord broken. And He changed my life. God's working on you. You're still struggling with sin. You're still struggling with uh, temptation. You still give in to sin sometimes and choose to sin. I had a brother in Christ correct me on that. I used to say you can fall into sin. No, you can choose to sin. What the Bible talks about is you can fall into temptation. Okay? You still struggle with sin, but you look at where you are now, and you look back at the point in time that God saved you, and you go, there's a big change. God's working on me. He's cleaning up my life. There's a change. I'm not the man I was. The old man is dead and buried. 
I have been risen with Jesus Christ as a new man. My life reflects it. And these people think it's foolishness. Oh, it's works-based salvation. Oh, it's this. Uh, the changed life after salvation is guaranteed for those who get saved. And there's so many brethren on YouTube and brothers and sisters in Christ that I've talked to that have uh, emailed me to my P.O. box, emailed me to my email address, and I have letters from my P.O. box of testimonies from brothers and sisters in Christ. God changed me. I don't get these people. There's no change. They look like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, and they claim to love Jesus Christ. They'll call Jesus their Lord, but their life denies it. They call Jesus their King, capital K, King, but their life denies it. Well, what is it? Sin for a season. They think they've been deceived into worshiping Satan as an, as an antichrist, a fake Jesus, so they can have the world and call themselves a Christian. And that's what's popular to people today. I've had all kinds of people call themselves Christians that aren't Christians. The word Christian is misused throughout the whole world. Over half the world's population believes in a Jesus Christ. But they don't believe in the Jesus Christ. They reject the Jesus Christ. Most of them hate the Jesus Christ of Scripture. But they believe in a Jesus Christ. Okay. The wisdom of this world, where, where's the wisdom of this world going to send these people? These people that are so wise, we're going to attack the Godhead, we're going to attack the true plan of salvation, we're going to attack the true purpose of true baptism, which is with the Holy Ghost. Even attack, they even attack the baptism of fire. Oh, there's no hell. It's not real fire. It's just separation from God and, and this. The fire is fire. You reject Jesus Christ, you will burn for all eternity. It's literal fire. You'll be burning up, but you'll never burn out. You'll burn for all eternity. There's just no getting around it. And these people, they're just, they're wisdom in this world. Where's the wisdom is this world leading these people? To hell and the lake of fire. Isn't that the ultimate foolishness? They say we're foolish. But isn't that really foolish, that their wisdom that they're holding on to, it's a matter of life and death, is leading them to hell, and, they, and they're just going to go to hell. No matter what you say, no matter what I say, they're just going to be so stubborn, and they're just going to, they want sin for a season. Our job, brothers and sisters of Christ, is to reach those who God will open doors for us. We're trying to get that last soul saved so we can go home. Okay. Now, I hope this uh, teaching has helped you when it comes to the baptism, okay? What name was baptized in? Jesus. Not Yeshua, not Yahashua, not Jehovah, not the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The name. What's the name? It's Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. It's that simple. So, brothers and sisters, please keep standing and standing and standing for God's Word. And I hope this has been encouraging to you to continue having testimonies. Preach your testimonies. Let people know how God saved you, the changed life, the bad life you had before the old man and the new man. And tell people about repentance. Keep standing for true biblical repentance. Godly sorrow for your personal sins that you've sinned against them. Not generalized sin. I always say personal. Why? Because people will say, well, I'm a sinner. But we're all sinners. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. That's generalizing it. You've got to come to God personally. You, if you're lost out there, have to come to God personally. One-on-one -on -one, and talk about your personal sins and having sorrow for them. Keep standing for true biblical repentance. True belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It was God, the Father, that died on the cross. Jesus, who is God, fully and completely. Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Then there was another passage talking about God the Father dying for us. Who died on the cross? Jesus. You know, God the Father. Jesus is God the Father. That true belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ, you might not understand it completely at first, but what I did understand when I got saved is that Jesus that died on the cross, that Jesus I believe in, is fully, completely God. Manifest in the flesh. 
paid for my sins. Innocent. Perfect. Didn't make any mistakes. Didn't deserve that. But he chose to do that. So that I could have a way to go to heaven. Keep standing to the true plan of salvation, the true gospel, the real Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about confessing both in prayer. That's where your prayer life starts, brothers and sisters in Christ. We can all testify to it. The moment I got saved, that was my first prayer to God, and that's when my prayer life started. And I started praying to God every day. Okay? You confess both your uh, repentance and your belief in prayer to God. It says, with confession, says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, not the head, the heart. And without repentance, it'll never make it down to the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And you keep going down, it's talking about whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You ask God to save you. Keep standing for it. Don't back down. I've seen people starting to back down on it. They're starting to water down the gospel. Right? Don't do that. Okay? Stand, stand, stand for what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches the Godhead, God in one person, body, soul, and spirit. Jesus is the Father. The Father is Jesus. The separation, the distinction is body, soul, and spirit. Not three separate persons. The Bible teaches that I and my Father are one, and they can't do anything about that except ignore it or try to explain it away by twisting Scripture. They can't believe what the Bible says. The wisdom of this world is leading them to hell. We can keep trying to reach them, brother and sister in Christ, but I guess I'm, I'm kind of rambling a little bit because it just it bothers me because I keep coming across people every once in a while that no matter how much love you show them and how much truth you show them, they just don't want it. You tell them once or twice, you're done. So I hope this has really encouraged the brethren and I uh, want to leave you with this. See, grace and peace. I'm not doing. I'm not saying this to be anybody's enemy or anything. I'm just trying to preach the word, the truth of God. Okay, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all you brothers and sisters in Christ out there who have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, mainly. Have you been baptized with water? Okay, but have you been baptized with that Holy Spirit, the Godhead, Jesus Christ of the King James Bible? Okay. Grace and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.